So you might remember we have a 10% list of jobs that are 90% there with just a little bit left to go. And we've managed to cross a bunch more off in the last couple of episodes. The air filter got done, the expansion uh, tank pipes brackets all got done, um, the intercoolers went back in, the radiator return pipe got done last episode. That was a really, really big win. That's been a long time coming. So yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff that we finished, but we have added a few more things on. Uh, the inner arch rubber trim, we, we need to go around all four of the removable panels, well, sorry, all four corners of the car and the removable panels and reinstall all of those. And we also need to finish off the bodywork on each side behind the wheels. And that is also adding in our indicators. Now working on this panel means two things. First, it means blowing the cobwebs off some more old TT parts. We do have the side repeaters from that sat in a box yeah. somewhere, hopefully somewhere less lost there. than our handbrake. Yeah, hopefully less lost than our manual handbrake we're going to have to install at some point because that still hasn't turned up. Yeah, so we're going to dig those out, see if we can find them, slap them in a panel and pop it on. The other thing that we're going to be doing with it is using it as a vent to get air out of the back of the wheel arch. Something that I've read not enough about to know confidently, but enough to kind of have a rough inkling of is that in the back of a wheel arch as a wheel's turning, you get like a lot of uh, turbulent and high pressure air that causes bad. I don't know, I can't remember exactly <laughs> what it causes, but you don't want it. So ideally you want to be able to vent the wheel arch out somewhere and we're going to dump it out the side of the car. So here's the piece of metal we're going to use as a side panel here. We've already cut this down more or less to the right shape and size, but like everything else we've done on this car, we do have to have a bit of a radius on it for safety reasons. Now, thankfully, the IVA is fairly sensible, and because it's only a vent, not like a whole protruding front edge on the car, you don't have to have like a big 5 mil radius on it. We can get away with about a half mil on this. Now, this is fairly thick material, so probably if we just hammered the edge over, that would meet the safety requirements. But to just give ourselves a bit more safety room and also to add some strength down the back of it, we're actually going to use this piece of steel rod. Same sort of stuff that we've used on the back of the car around the tail lights and everything. And like mo so many other pieces of metal work, we're going to start off by finishing off the frame. So we're going to weld this up so that we've got all three sides of our, uh, of our panel located. Then we're going to shave this down to match. And to make sure that the, that the vent is definitely less than that 25 mil size limit that we have to get that small allowed radius, we're going to use this piece of 20 mil box section. And we're just going to pop that down there and just position the rod right up against it to make sure our, to make sure our gap's the right size. We're almost ready to go now. I've spent the last few minutes wire brushing all the metal here, which is a treat I don't often treat myself to. Every time we don't do that, all the welds kind of become a nightmare. And we always say we should, and we really do, because we're usually in a rush. And while I've been doing that, Abe's been cutting the vent out of the back of the uh, metal piece here. So this is going to go on there just like that. And then we're going to finish it up a little bit more in a second. The other thing that we're going to do as well, we've moved the indicator up a little bit. We're moving it closer to the top, just so it's near the metal to clip the cables onto, just keep everything a little bit neater inside. We're going to rough cut this hole now while it's off the car, and it's a little bit easier to do. And once it's all in place, we can file it down exactly to suit, because we are talking about kind of millimetres of tolerance on the back of the uh, indicator here. So Chris has got this panel in really nicely. It's got a little gentle bow out this way, which then sweeps nicely into this concave panel on this side with the vent acting as a bit of a brake. I might actually bring it a little bit further out just to accentuate that and open this vent up just a touch. But for the time being, we're gonna work on getting this indicator hole to the correct size. Now on the back of the indicator, there's this little spring clip and that's what holds it in. And whilst the hole is big enough for the body to fit through, that clip won't actually fit through the gap. So just here I've marked an extra little bit I need to take out. I'm going to use the die grinder just to whiz that out to the right side and just creep up on something that is as close as possible to the right size without having it rattling around.
That's the hole nicely cut out. It fits pretty well. We can put this back in now and it just sits like that, which is basically level. Um, now it's perpendicular with the slot in the back because this obviously comes up a little bit. All we've got to do now is redo all of this on the other side in as close to exactly the same way as we can, which we're not great at repeatability, let's be honest here. While we're finishing stuff up at the front of the car here, we're going to do a bit more work on our inner wheel latches. Now I've had a couple of panels like this, this is the one for the uh, driver side over there, that we've been trying to make to fill in this gap up here. Uh, just where the wheel latch joins, uh, just into where the bonnet hinges go. Now, this is a fairly complex piece by our standards. There's quite a few different bends in here to try and accommodate the geometry up there. The problem is this is still not complicated enough. There's yet more bends that we have to put in to get around all the various different intricate bits around the corners and everything. And we've basically decided um, that this approach is doomed. It's not going to work. So we're going to try and simplify things a bit. And we're going to start somewhere else and build up in, uh, in small pieces. So you've got some much larger pieces of aluminium that we've prepared now. This one is going to just go, if you'll excuse the noise, is going to go in there and that's going to fill up the front inner corner. And then there's a flat plate, a triangle, that's going to go on top to cover over all of that. And that leaves us with just two triangles that we have to fill in here and here, which is hopefully going to be a lot easier to fit everything together. And it should also give us a much more solid structure. Part of the problem that we've got here is that there's actually three different parts of the car. So we've got, the, um, we've got the top of the arch and we've got the frame back here that's all part of the chassis itself. We've got this frame in the middle, which is the radiator bracket. And we've got some stuff at the front, which is part of the, um, the bumper assembly that all comes off. So this should give us a slightly more secure way of attaching everything together. Just a few more faces and a few more angles and a few more points of triangulation that should help it support itself without having to be riveted into all the other bits of the car that we're not allowed to rivet it into. And we're all done for the day. We've got the side panels on both sides. They're primed and looking fairly good. We have had a little bit of very slight misalignment where the sheet metal hasn't quite come out to the same face as the rest of the car. So we're just gonna fit, put a little bit of filler in there and just fill up this little edge. But other than that, it's looking pretty great. The vent has come out really, really nice. I like how the angles have all ended up looking. We've sort of taken a few steps back and had a glance around it from all over the place. And we're pretty delighted with how those have come out. In fact, we're so delighted. There's already a photo of it on Discord. Um, while we've been in there, we've also, uh, well, do, do that again and go. And if you haven't already, yes, you, you can. You yeah, you should join the desk. Yeah, link in the doobly. Well, it's the end of another long, cold day here at Pedalbox headquarters, and we do have both of our side panels on and primed on both sides of the car. They're looking really, really good. The alignment on this one isn't perfect, but that's kind of the nature of like hand cut and hand welded panels. We're going to put a little skim of filler on there and uh, hide all of our crimes, just like kind of the whole rest of the car. But the vent is looking really, really nice. We've taken a few steps back and sort of gone, hmm, yes, very good from quite a few different angles. So we're delighted with that. We're so delighted with it. There's already a picture of it in Discord, which you should absolutely join because it is now free to access. There's a link somewhere down there that Adrian will put in in the edit. The indicators are also both in, and we've also done a bit more work inside the inner arches. These big removable rear panels where some of our wiring goes through and that we wanted to wanted access for a few other bits and pieces. We've gone round the edges with rubber trim so that hopefully when we're driving along and they inevitably rattle a bit, they at least won't be a nice metal on metal rattle. It'd be nice rubber on metal. Um, we do have to uh, apologise to Ford, who we insulted quite a lot when we were working on the Thunderbird a while ago. We've learnt a lesson from them, which is if you don't know how to design your rubber seals and your panels to fit properly, uh, just drill holes through and put wire through and twist it all to hold it all in. So these are actually held on exactly the same way as all the seals in the Ford Thunderbird's front wing. So we've definitely taken a, a leaf out of their book. But this should all hold on pretty good, which previously it wasn't because it's was going all around these outer edges. The rubber just wanted to sort of straighten back out and come off. So we're going to screw these back in, get that all back together, get the wheels back on, and I think we might even be ready to put it back on the ground where it hasn't been for quite a few days now. Well, that wraps up another episode of Pedalbox. I hope you've enjoyed watching. This was the last piece of steel that we had to go on the outer bodywork, and it's also one of the last pieces of steel we had in the garage. So if you want to get us some spare material, which we'll surely need at some point, jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. You can support us there for as little as a dollar a month. All tiers get you a discount at our merch store at shop.pedalbox.show, where you can buy one of these snazzy hats or one of those snazzy mugs, which right now is holding a big brew of tea to try and keep me warm. 
We've also got t-shirts and hoodies. Not that you can see either of those. I'm like four layers deep at the minute. A few episodes back, we asked for some feedback on how to do these and everyone in the comments said, keep it simple, don't do anything clever. So that's what we did. If you like what we did, like the video. If you didn't like what we did, comment down below or just comment anyway if you've got any thoughts on what we've done. If you enjoyed it, remember to like it, share it around to your friends. We can always use more growth on the channel, always use more money on the Patreon for more steel, more welding gas, more rubber seals and everything else that we're going through on this project. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>